Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Presbyterian Church in Monroe, and we are glad you are gathered with us as a congregation. We are coming to you online today, and uh, we invite you to be a part of our congregation, sing along with the songs, pray, and, uh, and enjoy the presence of God in your living room, in your car, uh, walking with headphones, whatever that might be for you as you listen today. We are in the presence of God, and God welcomes us as we worship together. Today is our second Sunday in Advent, and uh, you can see that our theme during December, the Advent season, when we await the coming of Jesus in Bethlehem, is journey to Bethlehem. And you can see our journey path spread out before you. Uh, each week we'll light one of the candles of Advent and remember part of the theme. <clears throat> Last week we looked at Mary as a key character in this journey to Bethlehem, of course. And this week we're going to be looking at Joseph. And so you can keep that in mind. Uh, note also that you're welcome to be part of uh, Pastor Joby's uh, uh, internet Bible study, and you can sign up through our office for that. Or on Wednesday at 1.30, we will have uh, an in-person Bible study here at the church on Elm Avenue in Monroe. Thank you for being with us today. We're grateful for your presence. Psalm 85, 1 to 2, 8 to 13. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him, and will make a path for his steps. As we journey to Bethlehem on the second Sunday of Advent, we begin to see the need for courage and humility. Joseph hears God's call to play a quiet role as Mary's husband, providing a family for Jesus, as well as teaching God's word. Let's pray together. God of grace, as we confront the unknown futures of our lives and world, give us the faith of Joseph. Make our hearts ready to hear the voices of angels. Grant us courage to make deep commitments to you. Create in us the humility to live in quiet obedience to your call. Amen.
Today, as we come into God's presence, our Heavenly Father loves us and invites us to gather to worship and to come boldly before his throne of grace to confess our sins so that we might know and live in the freedom of that forgiveness. And let us pray together. Forgiving God, as we journey to Bethlehem, we discover the many places where we need to grow. We confess that we do not always have ears to hear your word, nor the will to follow. Give us tender hearts that, like Joseph, we may be quick to respond to your will. We thank you for your forgiveness and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. In this moment, I invite you to make that prayer of confession your own silently. The scripture teaches us that when we confess our sin, God is quick to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hear the good news today, and this is really good news. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Praise be to God. Amen. As we come to the scripture today, we read a passage of scripture that's very familiar to you. So let us pray and ask God to bless the reading of his word and the preaching of his word. Lord God, pour out your spirit upon us to bring good news to the oppressed and let your word be fulfilled among us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us hear the word of God. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but he knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> In the quiet of the night, or in morning's early light, is your heart prepared for a king? Will you hear an angel sing? Will your own Osanna's ring? Is your heart prepared for a king? Wait, watch, pray. 
the babe of whom we sing, born to be our God and King, is your heart prepared? Is your heart prepared? Is your heart prepared for our King? Our scripture today tells us the story of Joseph. And Joseph is an interesting man as we focus on his life and his encounter with God and his relationship with Mary on this Sunday, the second Sunday of Advent. Joseph was, in most ways of thinking, uh, what we used to call uh, just an average Joe. He was a woodworker, carpenter, an ordinary kind of a man. It's not told to us how old he is, uh, or anything like that, whether he was a young man uh, of 18 or 19, or if he was perhaps uh, older than that. We don't know that. But Joseph is a kind of what we might call a walk-on character in the biblical drama of God's salvation history and story. This is the only place where we read anything about Joseph, particularly as an individual. And interestingly enough, Joseph in this drama has no lines. He has no spoken words to share. Scripture doesn't have him speak, only act. And that tells us something good for ourselves too. Sometimes we need to be slow to speak and quick to act, and Joseph was that way. His role is significant, however, for when God was looking for the earthly father of God's son, Jesus, Yeshua, Savior, Joseph was God's choice, a basically unknown, ordinary, average kind of a man. Joseph, why, we might ask. Because Joseph, I believe, had the capacity to reflect God's character and nature in his love relationship with Mary and with a family that would become his. So let's explore that for a moment. We are introduced to Joseph in the middle of a personal crisis. Indeed, having become engaged to a beautiful young Hebrew girl, he has worked hard to establish an income to support his new bride and begin a family. He's in love. He's committed to marry. Their betrothal or engagement in that culture was actually a legal document covered by the law of the land, and it was just as binding as the marriage that would be a year hence. He is committed to marry. He believed in their love, and he believed in their love even when he heard that his precious bride was with child. Heartbroken, betrayed. How should Joseph respond? Should he publicly shame Mary? Should he turn her over to the religious authorities to be stoned to death for a sin of adultery? And that would be the punishment. Her explanation of the pregnancy was actually unbelievable. An angel came and said that the Holy Spirit would conceive this child. That was tough to hear. For in fact, that was a blasphemous statement in that culture and understanding of that time. If Mary hadn't been stoned on the charge of adultery, she could have been stoned for blasphemy. Joseph was in a bind. However, Joseph is quick to choose the path of mercy. Think about that. With all of that coming at him, with all the people around him who might 
tease him, who might blame him, who might uh, vilify Joseph's character and life. He responds in the character of God and gives mercy, the path of mercy. The Bible says, and Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace Mary, planned to send her away secretly. You can read that in Matthew chapter 1. Mercy is one of the most essential characteristics of our God. God told Moses centuries before this event, for the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not leave you or destroy you or forget the covenant, the promise with your fathers that he swore to them. Specifically, mercy designates that quality in God by which God faithfully keeps his promises and maintains his covenant relationship with you and with me. I think that's awesome. God is merciful, and that's how he relates to us. And Joseph displays this as he makes his decisions about Mary. Before any divine explanation, Joseph chooses kindness and discretion, no malice, no angry outburst or explosion. And certainly, he was entitled to ask a lot of questions here. How could you do this to me, Mary? Who is the father? How did this happen? But no words are recorded. Only tenderness meant to embrace and protect Mary. So Joseph manifests the love of God given to you and given to me. Where do we need this day to be open to God's spirit, to manifest God's merciful and tender love to our spouses, our children? Here's a hard one, our political leaders, especially in our day, with a kind of a political civil war of ideas and uh, going on in our own culture this year, toward our pastors. When we don't understand, we need to show mercy. That's what Joseph did. And that's a key teaching for us today as we make our journey to Bethlehem. Be full of grace. Listen. Trust God, who is always at work in our circumstances, sometimes unseen, sometimes behind the scenes. God is there for you to trust. Now, I want you to take a moment and reflect wherever you are. Joseph believed he was betrayed. Some of you have been betrayed by a spouse, perhaps, a child, a good friend, maybe even someone in your church, someone you trusted, admired, loved, valued, could have been a child with whom you are estranged and you won't really understand why. When that trust is broken, we are broken. Our hearts break. And it could be that you are still feeling that pain today and that hurt. And I believe that as we look at Joseph as our mentor, our example, I believe that God wants to heal us today, heal you and me, our nation, our world. Joseph manifest healing love, the kindness and grace that God manifests in our lives, in your life. And as disciples of Jesus, we need healing of those betrayals, and we need to be able to give to others that same kindness that Joseph gave, that same forgiveness, the same healing and grace that Joseph gave to Mary. 
needs to be seen in our world. And I invite you to invite God to heal you in that today. And I, I feel so strongly about that that I want us to take a moment right here and I'm going to pray a prayer for healing and wholeness for all of those where we feel that, that brokenness of betrayal in our lives so that we might be free to have God birth in us new life. Heavenly Father, you know each person who is listening today, watching today, gathered before your word of forgiveness. And we have all touched in some way, some very powerful ways, betrayal in our lives where others have fallen short and we've been hurt. So we pray your healing power for each one of us. Holy Spirit, anoint with a word of promise that you will soothe roiled hearts, that you will mend broken relationships, that you will give within us the power to forgive and to bring healing in our lives, in our church, in our nation, in our world. And we pray this through the power of Jesus' name in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't go away. I'm still here. Joseph's mercifully kind actions exposed one final characteristic of God. He was courageous. He might be the talk of Nazareth. Friends might make snide comments, but he would not hurt Mary no matter what he thought she had done to him. When he could have demanded a bitter sentence, Joseph was courageous and stood up for grace and mercy. Praise be to God. Another translation puts these words this way. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man, and he did not want to disgrace Mary publicly. The key is being a good person, depending on the goodness of a good God. The key to being a good spouse, a good father, a good neighbor, a good employee, a good boss, is first being a good man, following our good God. It is said uh, in one of the things that you may be familiar with is one of the best things a father can do for his children is to love their mother. You've probably heard that, and that's what Joseph did. He loved Mary, even when he wasn't sure what that love was about. Love first. Jesus says, love your enemies when we are hurt. Act in love like Joseph did. When we are confused, angry, hurting, marginalized, we must reach deep down inside our faith and draw on the courage to choose God's way of love. So Joseph did just that. Joseph, in the end, was obedient to God. Even before he heard the word of the angel, he was obedient. Listen to what the Bible tells us. The angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for the child within her is conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son. And you're going to name this boy Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And when Joseph woke up, he did as the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have intimate contact with her until that son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. Oh, that we would be so quick to act. That's God's desire for us. Joseph woke up asking no questions, took that step of faith, believed God's word, and acted as the angel of the Lord commanded. Joseph was a carpenter, worked with his hands. 
He knew how to be precise, how to give value to customers, perhaps, in his shop. And he knew the, his value to God. This Christmas is our opportunity for God to birth within us a new way of thinking, new responses, new ways to build relationships with our families. And in these most intimate family and church family relationships, we are being called to stand up and stand out to live with mercy and courage and radical obedience to God. This can be life-changing. I shared this story of Joseph years ago in another congregation where I served as their transition pastor. And I challenged, it was Father's Day actually on that day, and I challenged all of the dads in the congregation to live like Joseph and to love their spouses and their children in that kind of way. And uh, without even thinking about it, I asked, uh, in the congregation, when was the last time you dads said to your son or your daughter, I love you, you're important to me, I value you? When was the last time you prayed with them? There was utter silence in the congregation. God was at work, always is even though we can't see him. And a few weeks later, actually it was probably a month later, I was going uh, from one meeting to another in the church and passed by the youth room and saw one of the young women, uh, the high schoolers from the church youth group coming through the door. And she saw me and she ran down the aisle, ran down the corridor and she ran right up to me and she said, Pastor Bob, Pastor Bob, you won't believe what happened to me. She said, because of what you said that Sunday a couple weeks ago, Pastor Bob, my dad came over to me later that day and he hugged me and he said, I love you. And he prayed with me. Pastor Bob, thank you so much. My dad never told me that before and he's never prayed for me. I am so thrilled. Their relationship changed that day because love was expressed. Share that with your neighbor. Be a Joseph. If you're a woman, be a Joseph. If you're a man, be a Joseph. If you're a child, be a Joseph. We thank you, Lord God, for your love, for your mercy. We thank you for this life of Joseph laid out before us, who was so important and so powerful and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
What an awesome word God gave us from Joseph this morning. Makes us thankful. And each week we take time in our worship service, uh, and I invite you, wherever you are, to share in giving thanks to God through the giving of our gifts and our offerings. And this is a reminder that we have the opportunity to give to God of our finances for the support of the ministry of this congregation in Monroe. And you may send in your offerings. If you go to our church website, uh, you have a giving button and you can set up a giving plan to give that way. Or if you drop by the church office, you can drop off your giving that way as well. And we thank you for your, uh, for your gifts that support the ministry that God is doing here. God is doing great things, and we give grateful praise to the Lord. Let us worship God through the giving of our gifts. you as God's people to join in the prayers that we bring to the Lord today. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for people in ages past who have lived in your love, whose name you have called to live your example, to live your love before us, so that we might be able to do the same thing. We praise you and thank you. On this Sunday of Advent, we thank you for Mary, and Joseph, for their lives, for their example. We thank you for your word through prophecy and also through the visit of the angels, and we praise you. Our world needs to hear your word today. We need in our world, our families, our relationships to hear your direction. So speak, Lord. Give us ears to hear, hearts to respond, we pray. We pray for all of those in our world who are sick with COVID this season. We pray, Lord God, in the power of Jesus' name and in the Holy Spirit, that that COVID virus would be broken in our world now. Break its back, take its power, for it has no power before you. We thank you. Heal those who are sick, bring them to wholeness. Comfort those who perhaps have lost a loved one because of COVID or other reasons. Comfort their hearts this day, we pray. Be with our families this season. So many perhaps traveling, perhaps gathering for holidays. We pray that you would bless those gatherings and bring your healing love to build families up in through this congregation and in our communities, we pray. And Heavenly Father, we pray for our leaders during this season. Our world is in a tumult. Our nation is in a tumult. And as our elected officials at a national level uh, in our states and governors and mayors and city councils work together to make good decisions, may they make good decisions like Joseph. May they seek you and not depend on their own ideas but as leaders of old sought after you and prayed, may we see that same resurgence of prayer come about, we ask. Bless this congregation as we share in this Advent time.
together online, and we look forward to being able to be together, Lord, as a congregation again, and we pray that you would make that happen soon. And now, Lord, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Unto you, O Lord, we give praise and honor and glory. You are the God of Abraham and Isaac. You are the God of King David. You are the God of Joseph and Mary. You are the God of the disciples before us who walked this path 
to which you call us. We give you grateful praise. And now as God's people, go forth as Joseph people. Leave your homes and visit your neighbors and love your children and your families as Joseph people with that courage and that love. Amen.